Namaskar, dear devotees and friends. I wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Today is a very special day. The instead of our regular discussion, so we will be will be discussing about the the mother. The Mother's Day, I congratulate and humbly offer my pranam to all the mothers of the world. On this occasion, I like to recite the first words of the Sri Sharada Devi Suprabhatam. It is, it is very nicely, very wonderfully mentioned about the Divine Mother. Mata Samasta Jagatam Paramamsa Pumsaha Shakti Swarupini Shibi Kurunadra Chitti Lokasya Shoka Shamanaya Kritavatare Sri Saradis to Shibadi Taba Suprabhatam O Mother, you are the Supreme Mother of the Universe. Shamastha Jagatam Parama Amsa Pumsaha. Mata, O Mother, you are the Supreme Mother. Why Supreme Mother? Because the Jagata, you are creating the whole universe. Then, O Mother, the embodiment of power, auspiciousness, and kind hearted. Shakti Swarupini Shibe. Shakti Sarupa, embodiment of power. What is that power? It is the power of creation, the power of sustenance, and power of dissolution also. The all power is in that particular aspect of Brahman, whom we are addressing as Mother. And it is auspicious, it is Shibe. Why auspicious? Because it has no desire, desire to enjoy the worldly things. And if you are free from that, you are pure. That is auspicious. And of course, Karunadra Chitte, kind hearted. Otherwise, why she will do it? Why the mother will do it? Why the Brahman will do it? The Karuna, the Kripa, the kindness, the compassion, it is all there. Lokasya Shoka Shamanaya Krita Avatare. Avatare. You have come down in the human form. Why? To, you have kindly incarnated to relieve the world from the grief. Shoka Shamanaya. Lokasya Shoka Shamanaya. And who is this mother? This time, her name is Ma Sarada. Shri Sarada to Shibadi, the Divine Mother Sarada, may the dawn be full of glory to you, Supravatam. The literal translation of the Supravatam is good morning, and may this morning be all glorious. So with this, I offer my pranam to all the mothers on this Mother's Day. Friends, you will be very happy, particularly this is a very important day for the Indians and particularly for the Bengalis. Why you know? Because today is the Pachishe Vaishak, 25th Vaishak. This is the birthday of the great poet Rabindranath Tagore. And this Rabindranath's mother name was Sarada Sundari. As, a, as we were offering the pranam to the Divine Mother Sarada, the Divine Consort of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, and we are remembering today as because the great poet's mother is also Sarada Sundari. We bow our head to this mother who gave birth to an illustrious son like Rabindranath Tagore. Friends, we all know that the Hindus respect and consider mother 
and the motherhood as the higher than the heaven. Mother and the motherland. So it says in the Sanskrit, Janani Janma Bhumishcha Sargadapi Gariyashi. Janani, mother, Janma Bhumi, motherland, Sargadapi, Api, means higher, higher than Sarga, heaven, Gariyashi, more glorious. So these two, mother, motherland, and higher than the heaven. So why? Is it just out of emotion? We will come to, we, I will try to discuss on that. So what is this heaven conception? Heaven means, we call it Swarga in Sanskrit. Everyone is free. Free from the fear, free from suffering. And it's a place full of love. The conception of Swarga, Jajanna, the heaven, all everywhere in every tradition, if you go to that, the meaning is a place where people are free, full of love, full of cooperation, and there is a shanti is there, the peace is there. So that is the conception of the heaven. And who is a mother? Mother is also one who is full of love, just out of love. She is bearing the pain for 10 months and terrible pain, discomfort. But still the mother, just out of love, is bearing and giving birth to us. And she is full of compassion. She is full of care. Nights after nights, for so many years, till that small little baby grows up to take care of itself. The mother is going on taking care of that. Even after that, she is always watchful. Why? Because of love. And on whose lap a child is always very free from fear. The lap of the mother is a most safe place for the baby, for the child. So that's why the mother. What about the motherland? The place where we are born, we call it motherland. And sometimes the Europeans, they call it fatherland, the conception of the father. The father is considered as the God, the fatherland. But the Eastern, particularly Indian concept, is mother. So we call it motherland. So what is this speciality in the motherland? The motherland is providing the food, the shelter, the protection, and each and everything with which we are growing up. Can you forget that? So this is the, like the mother, the motherland is also protecting us. And we should be always grateful, at least to these two, motherland and the mother. So the Hindus, they learn right from their childhood, Janani Janma Bhumishcha Sargada Pigariyashi. Do they denounce the father? No. The father is highly respected. Father is the ideal. But at the same time, the mother and the motherland, they are just above the heaven. It is the mother who gives existence to the child. Every being has a mother. Now that is very, very important. When we consider the mother as a lady, and obviously when we are thinking of that lady, she is not physically that powerful or capable like the father, but she is really very, very careful capable, love, completely full of love and unselfishness for the child. So the great respect is given to the mother. I am so happy and all of us are happy for sure that at least a day has been given to remember the mother. The great contribution of the mother we forget. 
when we are growing up on the lap of the mother under her care, that age, we cannot understand her sacrifice. So much she is giving for us. The father will be going out to office and this place, that place. The mothers, sometimes I have seen the working mother, they have given up the job, resigned from the job, only to take care of the child. And when that child is growing up, if that, the child forget about this sacrifice of the mother, that cannot be considered as a human being. The human being means the first thing is Shraddha and Kritagata. These are the two qualities of a human being. Shraddha means the respect and Kritagata, the remembering of those people and also helping those people and considering them as a great friend who has helped us to grow and survive. The each and every one as a mother. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna had a vision of the womb of Brahman. Each and every one is born, but how about this? Who was the first born? The Prakriti, the nature, this universe, this world. Who is the mother of this universe? Brahman. And Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna literally saw that how that womb of the Brahman is giving birth of innumerable world at every moment. So that is a philosophical thing. All the time the Brahman is creating. So Brahman is considered also as the mother. This divine mother holds the universe in her all-pervasive embrace. The creation that she is doing at the same time, sustenance. For that, she is giving the love in the heart of that lady who has given the birth of the child. She has given, the, war, the nature has given, the Brahman has given the love in the heart of the father, the man who has become the father. So if we notice that when a young man, a lady, just married, not yet the mother and the father, their attitude towards children will be different. A young lady loves the children, mostly all people, they love children. But that love is not the mother's love. And that young person, he is also taking care of the children, but not as the fathers they do. The moment they become parents, the moment they become father and the mother, the same young man and the lady, their attitude changed. How? <coughs> so much care they will take to the child. I have seen the young couples are coming, bringing their baby. They are so very careful. And the, the father is holding that baby and mother is careful. The father should take proper care. And the, the male, they are not very much care, careful about that. So the mother is constantly taking care of that both of them and then I think look at it this is the grace of the divine mother who is known as the Brahman so the changes are coming in our attitude in our feeling it is not for one day or one moment when the children they come we also go and pat and oh it is go so good and we are giving the candies to them that much but taking care of them moments and the hours and the days and the years. Can, can you imagine the sacrifice the mothers are doing? This divine mother is holding, so the our mothers also. This great mother heart is the source of all unity, all harmony, all love. She is the some Dini Shakti. I am mentioning a Shakti. It has been mentioned in the Tantra. The Lord is having different Shakti, the power. What is this Lord? The Brahman. Now, let us go back to that our, the Vedantic conception. There is one who is all-pervading consciousness, who is having all power, but completely inactive. We call it Brahman, but we add Niriguna. 
ni negative guna qualities there is no qualities that means inactive but is he that brahman is not having the qualities of course it is having no power of course it is everything is there but in a potential way not manifested so that is the condition of the brahman now no one knows how from that brahman all the creation start begin all this creation how they say you just desired the i want to be many and started this part of the brahman when the brahman is creating we call mother and this part that the same con consciousness all pervasiveness it is there at the same time it is creating creating the universe and the universe so many beings so many varieties and not only that in after creating immediately providing food and shelter and providing the love in the hearts of the father and the mother and all around people so janani at the same time janma bhumi and suppose only the parents are loving their children and all around people they are not what will happen they won't be able to survive so the conception of the janma bhumi also is there all around people will be supporting them congratulate them celebrate the birthday of the child they are all cooperating to help the new born so where from all these conceptions are coming just accident just is happen just is natural where from it came there must be someone somewhere giving all this and that is the divine mother whom we call the brahma yoni that is the mother of the whole universe and from it is per percolating and the power the particular power with which this is happening is known as samdhini shakti there are different shaktis are there particularly three shaktis three different power this is samdhini shakti most ancient scripture rigveda describe this shakti as female as mother and called her aditi in the rigveda the first we find the conception of the mother mother of all mother of everything that brahman but the moment that brahman which is all pervading without name without form we are confused we like to love our mother respect our mother we like to go and sit on the lap of our mother that feeling is not there so the rigvedas the rishis when they saw that as the bhagwan sri ramakrishna he also saw the womb of the brahman they also saw and they gave the name so with the name we can get associated with that we can develop the feeling what is the name of the first mother of the creation aditi the aditi and it says the aditi means boundless the sanskrit word aditi means boundless and there is no limit now in the rigveda and it says in this way and also we find the same verse almost the same verse in the katopanishad and it says aditi do aditi antariksha aditi mata pita saputra vishe deva aditi panchajana aditi jatam aditi janitvam aditi so very nicely very simple way is mentioning aditi do do means the akasha do means the space do means the sky the all pervasiveness the conception of all pervasiveness the human being can think only about the sky so what is the first mother she is vast like the sky everywhere aditi do next is antariksha she is also the atmosphere now there is heat there is the air and there is everything so that the being after coming into life they can survive antariksha antariksha means 
the air is there, the heat is there, the cool is there, water is there, everything that is called antariksha. So, aditi dvo aditi antariksha. And then comes down aditi because we need the father and the mother for the creation. So, they say, say aditi is the mata, mother, pita, the father, sa putraha. The putra also, the son is also the same. Friends, we are from the point of view of the Hinduism we are talking. The mother. Who is this mother? All. The mother, father and their children are the same. Because the same consciousness. Same consciousness is taking form. So Hinduism always takes us to that oneness. At the same time, we enjoy the different varieties. Aditi is the mother, Pita, Saputra. The Bishya Deva Aditi, all the gods are also Adities. The who is the mother of the Devas, the gods, we say Aditi. Again, it says Panchajana. Panchajana means the human being and the beings, other beings. Particularly human being. Who is the mother of the human being? Again, Aditi. Jatam Aditi. What is, whatever is there is nothing but Aditi. And again, it never ends over here. It says, Janitvam. That will be in future. That is also Aditi. So on this Mother's Day, we should always bow down to this, the great mother Aditi who is the father, the mother, and also every being. And the other name of Aditi? Brahman. So if we like to have a mother, okay, Aditi. But if you are a little dry and very hardcore, analytic, the way you live, for Brahman. So for you it is Brahman, but for those who like to love and feel that there should be a mother, I like to be loved by mother, for them it is Aditi. So who is the mother? Aditi. This divine mother has two aspects. One is gentle, another is terrible. The sometimes we complain, why if the God, even many great people have complained, if the God is all compassionate, then why so much of killing, so much of suffering? You will find almost all people, whoever is criticizing God, this is the only argument. Why this so much of killing, suffering, and the being? Why is God? If the God is compassionate, of course the God is compassionate. The one aspect of God. The another aspect of God that is terrible. So the gentle and terrible both mixed. Now look at the mother. The mothers are also, in our life also we have seen, the mothers, a very gentle mother, though when she is afraid of cockroach, very shy and gentle, the mother, and she is so afraid of cockroach, she'll be shouting and creating a Problem for the whole household if you sees a cockroach. The same mother, she will never be afraid to face the lion if she sees that her child is in danger. She will immediately go and stand before, in between the son or the child and the lion and the death. So that is the terrible aspect of the mother. Ma Sharada Mani Devi was so gentle, so kind, so motherly. But those who have read the biography of Ma Sharada Mani Devi, you have seen that the mother, when she was coming back from uh, the pond, after taking water, after bathing, a, a mad person, and he was a devotee. Then afterwards, uh, something happened. His wife wanted to hold, you know, the, that is the way people, people they always do and she gave some medicine something and this uh, 
person lost the balance, mental balance, and he became mad. And we don't know for what reason, but he was chasing the Divine Mother. Mother was so kind, so gentle, and she was telling, go away from here, go away from here. But when she was tired because he was going on chasing, the mother took the terrible form and such a strong person. And when a man is mad, as because the body consciousness is very less in them, they become very powerful. But the, this gentle mother of ours, the Sharadamani Devi, they slapped his face and he fell on the ground. Then the mother took his tongue out and was going on slapping to make him calm. That is the terrible form of the mother. So we always see two aspects of the mother, gentle and terrible. And when the mother is gentle, we are so happy. But the, when the same mother is terrible, we are afraid. Who gave the birth? Mother. And who helped us to sustain, to grow up? Mother. And now, if we are doing something wrong, which is against all the norms of the human society, whether the mother will punish us or not. If she is supporting that also, then we cannot consider her as mother. The no mother should support the bad or wrong doings of the children. So this also we have to keep in mind. The mother is having these two different aspects. Divine mother's power manifests through our mothers. From the beginning of the Indian civilization, Indian women were guided by two ideals, we can call values. And this is very important. The, each and every one is guided by a value. The, when we are having some values, some ideas, then we, we are going to that thinking, oh, I am completely free. I have taken this decision. But no, each and every one is guided by some philosophy, some ideology. And that we should be careful of. If that ideology is narrow, sectarian, then that person and the people of the society also become like that. The human being, each and every human being, are guided by the ideology. In the beginning of the civilization, we can call that the Vedic civilization. This Vedic civilization, the, the ladies, the women, they were guided by two ideologies. What is that? Brahmavadini in the beginning. First and foremost was the Brahmavadini ideology, ideals. The Vedic age, they were all the philosophers. What the Brahmavadini? Now you know that uh, India is a blessed land. Those who have visited India, those who have seen even uh, the geography, it is protected by the Himalaya. And at the same time, so many rivers are there, very fertile land. And with little effort, we can grow a lot of vegetables. So obviously, the economy was very good. And along with the economy, along with the wealth, they developed the philosophy also. And in that philosophy, they always felt the happiness is not in an enjoyment of these worldly things. This is very interesting. Mostly, the people, whenever they get the wealth, they like to enjoy. What type of enjoyment? Physical enjoyment. They will go and bathe in these and then these, that. So many varieties. I need not to give the list because you all know. But afterwards, when they come back from that, are they happy? No. But again, they think, we will go to that place, we will go to that place, we will do this, we will do that. They go on experiencing every time they come back and then they say, oh, that was all right. Some happinesses were there, but some bad incidents happened. And then the, my health was not good. So they are not completely happy. Then why? That people started searching in that almost in the dawn of the civilization, the Rigvedic age, nearly 10,000 years before from now, 
they started searching where we can get the permanent happiness, the joy, the bliss. And if you are above the fear, then in the happiness. Every time I have got something, suppose a gold ring, then I am careful. The other people should not take it. I should not lose it. The fear is always there. So when there is no fear, that must be the happiness, the permanent happiness that they were searching. And when the some people they were searching, there were many ladies also. They were searching in that. So they became great philosophers. And we know the names of those great ladies. The Indian history, the, it began in the Vedic period and it says they started searching about the creation. Though the life was simple, morality was very high. That is called Satya Yuga. Uh, they have categories there. And the Indian philosophers, they have given in the ca categorized the whole period as a four. The first period is called Satya Yuga. Why? Majority of the people were very, very moral. And when they are moral, naturally you can feel, I have given the word, I must have to keep it. That is the highest morality. And when all people are doing that, that place itself, that society itself becomes heaven. So that is why they say the Satya Yuga. That means they were all truthful, very moral. That was there, but at the same time, they were the great researchers. And in that research, the women were also encouraged to do the same type of research. What they actually they were researching? The permanent. What is permanent thing? Where from all these things are coming. Each and everything, including our body, mind, all are changing. Anything that is uh, that are changing, obviously going to be destroyed. The something must be there permanent. So these searches were, and you will wonder, the girls, the girls also used to get receiving education along with the boys. After finishing the education, and learning the process of research, analysis, and they also started analyzing the mind. They started analyzing the external world and also the mind. And they found out the Creator. Srinantu Vishya Amritasya Putra Aye Dhamani Dibhyani Tastu The great sayings of the Vedas. And they are declaring, Oh, listen! All that you are, so that we have reached to that particular place where everything is lighted. And they are giving a hint that as if it is a personal thing. But you have to go beyond the darkness. What is the darkness? Ignorance. What is the ignorance? All that we see in different names and forms are actually not there. These are all imaginations. Only one truth is there. It's very hard even to think. I'm seeing so many things. The, all these beautiful flowers I see here and there. But they are not. They are all one. They say, yes, it is only one. So they are called rishis. They are known as seers. Will you believe in the most ancient scripture, the Rig Veda, we find more than 20 women seers. They are all listed over there. That means the women, we are talking about the mothers and what was the main ideology at the time of the, uh, the Veda. That is philosophical. That they were Brahma Badini. Brahma means that supreme consciousness. Badini when they speak about that, that means they were philosophers. They were the seers. They were the spiritual researchers. To so that was their ideals. That they were helping their counterpart, the males also, to find out the truth. So that was guided. In the Upanishads also, make it clear that there were many enlightened women philosophers, Brahmavadini. And we know the, the great story. In those days, 
and different schools were there. We can imagine in that way. The problem is, it is nothing recorded in that way. If that was there, the record was there because of the, the subjugation of the foreign rule for a long, long period of time, all this has been lost. Now, maybe in future, if something comes up, maybe. But we can imagine that whole society, the cream of the society, the intellectual group of the society, majority of the people are very good. The most of them are dedicated, uh, not uh, only in uh, this uh, research, they used to grow food, and but their life was very simple. So that's why no, not much demand. So that way they were concentrating to find out the truth. And what is that truth? The creator, where from the creation came, the Brahmavadinis. But there were the rulers also, I mean, how much afterwards, in the Upanishadic age. And in the Upanishadic age, we find the kings are inviting the scholars, the researchers, uh, in their the court and arrange for the debate. And as a gift for that, they used to say, we will give you 1,000 cows, because those days, cows were very costly. So 1,000 cows will give, because milk was there, and all the cows could be helped to cultivation. So that was there. Then the debate will be there. What about the debate? The topic of the debate is Brahman. It's not something very ordinary. But all people are coming and sitting over there. We can imagine right from the king and all his people, the subjects, they could also understand this highly philosophical debate. That means they were also trained and educated into that. There we find Yagyabalka, a great sage, a great fame. He is coming and claiming that I need those cows. And this very interesting way, he came and he announced, hey, my disciples, go and collect those cows and take it to my asthma. Others were sitting. You are supposed to do it. Then, but no one was able to stand up and uh, ask it that uh, great person because he was so highly capable in that uh, in the Vedic uh, literature. So he, all they were confused. Oh my God, is he a Brahmagyani? He is claiming as a Brahmagyani. But the Janaka said, you have to say that you are a Brahmagyani. Then only you can take it. But the Janaka himself was a Brahmagyani and he knew if one says that I am a Brahmagyani, he cannot be a Brahmagyani. Because I and the Brahman cannot be separate. They are the same. So who will say that I am a Brahmagyani? The Yonda Yagyabalka came and he said, hey, take the, all the cows with you. All of us said, hey, what is it? We are also here only to take the cows. Why are you spending our time? But no one could say anything against the Yagyabalka. Only one lady. That's why it's so famous. It is coming down through the traditions and Guru and Shishya Parampara. The great thing happened over there. One lady stood up over there and said, Do you claim, O Yagyabalka, that you are a Brahmagyani? And the Yagyabalka said, No, 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 no. I am just bowing down at the feet of the Brahmagyani, whoever he may be. I need those cows <laughs> because I have so many disciples, I have to feed them. And that debate went on between them, the Yagyabalka and the Gargi. Then she was debating. Can you imagine? These are the ideals of our motherhood. And then came, as the society was growing up, the time came when it was felt that the family should be properly taken care. Friends, we have to imagine now, as because there is no written history, but we can feel at the time of the Satya Yuga, people were very few. And in the, in the Puranas, you can understand the Brahma is creating, but majority of the people whom he is creating, immediately going for meditation. The Brahma said, hey, I have created you. You should go and marry and develop the family. They said, no, it is not possible for us. The Sanak, Sananda, Sanatan, Sanat Kumar, all the four brothers, they left. They like this, like this, it was going on. That's a wonderful 
story. But a time came when it was necessary to develop the families. Now, if you read the Ramayana, you will understand the Rama went out for in exile, but that was pre the divine uh, the planning because he was going through different places. He went to the jungle, but the jungle means there were people, there were societies. And he is going on solving all different type of things. Like one we should mention over here, that there was a lady so beautiful, her name was Ahalya. And you know, always it is there. And there was a god, and he felt attracted to the Ahalya. And that person was having the miraculous power could change his form into any form he wished. So taking the form of her husband, he came, he was Indra, and the husband was Gautama, and they met. Then afterwards the Gautama told, oh, now I cannot accept you as my wife. But if the Ramachandra only says, look at it, Ramachandra was only hardly 16, 17 years young person. But they knew Rama is the Param Brahma in the form of human being. The Rama went and met, and you know all our dramas and things, they, oh, it became the stone. The Allah became a stone. Rama went and placed his foot on that, and immediately the, that, that broke and Allah came out. It's nothing like that. It is, we have to imagine, because of the terrible insult, and the husband is denouncing, and the husband is telling that I am not going to accept you, and what will happen to that lady? She naturally withdrew herself, not talking with anyone, not mixing it with anyone, as if like a stone leaving the life. Rama came and said, no, there is no harm in it, because she was not in fault. It is the Indra that should be punished. So the family was growing up. If you, you see the Ramayana, everywhere we can understand the Sri Ramachandra is the great God, and he, what is his contribution? Giving a shape in the society. And from there we find the ideas and the ideals of the womanhood from the philosopher to homemaker, it changed. Who will take the responsibility? Again the women, again the mothers. So ideals is changing. From the philosopher ideal, Brahmavadini, they became the, uh, the homemaker, Patibrata. So this is the word started telling. And to always to encourage that, that you should follow these, then we find a verse that is encouraging the girls, the ladies, that you must remember and try to follow their lives. Who are they? Panchakanya. Panchakanya means the five ladies, five girls. And a popular verse is like this. Ahalla, Draupadi, Sita, Tara, Mandadari, Tatha, Panchakanya, Smarit, Nityam, Mohapatakam, Nashini. The daily remembers, remembrance of the five pious ladies, of like the Ahalya, Draupadi, Ahalya, the wife of Gautama, Draupadi, the wife of Pandava, Sita, the wife of Rama, Tara, the wife of Sugriva, Mandodari, the wife of Ravana. And if you remember them, that means remember their lives, you will be free from sin. And if you read their lives, they are all there in our Puranas. Each and every lady had to go through great difficulties. Mandodari was the wife of Ravana, you can imagine, the Ravanas, the atrocities. And the Mandodari was the great wife of the Ravana, the same way the Sugriva's wife and etc. And they slowly, slowly, this Patibrata Dharma was coming to as an ideal for the Indian womanhood. And afterwards, two great names also added. Instead of five, it became seven girls. Who are the other two? One is Shabitri. And another is 
Anushua. The Savitri, she saved the life of her husband, Satyavan. And I am not going to tell that story here, but this Savitri Satyavan story is so wonderful. And how she could save it? Because of her complete love, love for the husband. And that way, she saved the life of Satyavan. If you are interested, you must read these books. These are all available here in our bookstore. And you can online or in person, you can come and purchase. This Satyavan and Sabitri story. So that, that was added. Another is the Anushua, that is the Atri. Atri was the husband. It was the great Rishi, Atri. And his wife was Anushua. And she was so beautiful and so motherly, so pious. Now, three great gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar, this story is not that popular, so I am telling you. Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar, they wanted to test that lady. And they went and told, see, we are Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar. We are the three gods of the creation, sustenance, and the destruction. We want to see you completely naked. Stand before us. Atri. And the Atri's wife, Anushua. And look at that lady. Why these stories? Because the girls, the ladies should learn in different difficult situations how they are going to save them. Then immediately she, he, she told, Well, but I need some blessings from you. What is that? You have to be my babies. Then only I can undress myself before you. Now the gods were in difficulty. What to do? And they told that they will give the blessings. And they gave the blessings and they became all the babies lying on the small bed. And naturally the ma. So this is the story that we learn. In difficult situation also, how these mothers can save. Now friends, we will come to the present day situation. First, in the Rig Veda and the Vedic age, the ideology of the Indian women were Brahma Vadini, the philosophers. And then came the Pur Puranic age, that was the Grihasthi ideal, and Patibrata Dharma. And now in the modern stage, what? Before coming to that, I like to mention one or two the great mothers. One is Dhritarashtra's queen, Gandhari. This is in the Mahabharata. In the Gandhari, she was not knowing that she is going to marry a blind prince. So she came from Gandhar, that is the present day Afghanistan. And when she came to Delhi, she found that her would-be husband is a blind young person. All qualities were there. He was very, very good looking and also very powerful, strong, physically strong. But he was born blind. She didn't say that I am not going to marry. In those days it was possible. She could, but no. Well, if this is my fate, I am going to. And that's why the she is still known. From that day, before marriage, she blinded her eyes and with the cloth that all the time bound on her eyes and never saw. Now she was going on practicing austerity, and so many things were happening, her mind was completely concentrated. As you all know, the, the, as the students of the Hindu spirituality, it is all depends on the mind. If the mind is concentrated, immediately you get all the yogic power. So naturally, as she, her mind was completely concentrated, she developed some spiritual power, yogic power, and when she came to know that her son is preparing for the great war, Mahabharata, 
that Kurukshetra Yuddha, she wanted to save uh, his son as a mother's love, mother's heart. So she told her first son, the, you better come before me and I like to see you. Duryodhan was so happy and he was thinking this is the first time mother is going to see me. Mother has given me the birth but mother never saw me. This is the first time mother is going to see me. So Duryodhan was going. Krishna knew. Krishna, you know, the, as because he knew the hearts of each and every one, he immediately understood what is there in the mind of the Drup, uh, our Gandhari. The Gandhari is going to open that cover and wants to, wanted to see the sun and as because she was having that miraculous power to make the whole body unbreakable. No one could do any harm to Duryodhan. As a motherly heart, she wanted to do that. God, Krishna, Sri Krishna, he understood immediately. And he went to Duryodhan. Hey, where you are going? Now, nah, mother told that he, she wants to look at me. This is the first time I am going to see the eyes of my mother. Then why you are going in this way? The, you should cover your body. You, know, the, you are grown up. You are not a child. You are a grown up man. Cover your body and then go. And he went in the proper dress. When the mother told, remove your clothes. I like to see you. And he felt ashamed to remove the lower part of the dress in the lower part, particularly covering up to the thigh. And she opened the cover, looked at him, glanced at him, gave the blessings. The whole body became like, a, like the iron, very strong. Only the thighs became covered, so naturally couldn't do that. She understood the God's will and didn't say anything. Then we find the another scene when this Duryodhana is going to take the blessings from his mother and he knew Shattavaka. You know, when you are practicing the spirituality, a time comes when if you say something, it is going to get the fruit. So Satyavaka, she was having, Gandhari was having that power. Look at it, not the Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was not having that, but the mother Gandhari was having this power. And when the Duryodhana went and asked her blessings, Mother, give me blessing so that I win this war. Now, this is mother power. The mother, the affectionate mother, she wanted to protect the child, the, her son, Duryodhana. Now, when the Duryodhana has come to take the blessings, this is the mother power. And the same Gandhari told, if you have practiced, the righteousness, you will surely get the, the joy. That means you will win that this war. Yato dharma stata jaya. That if you have practiced the righteousness. So this is. Now friends, I like to tell you another of the same from the Mahabharata, Draupadi. The Draupadi, her five sons were killed by Ashatvama. The, I am not, uh, that is the time is short. I am not going to tell all the story. As a mother, you can feel the five sons Ashatvama killed secretly in the night. And she was crying. And she told that somebody should go and kill that Ashatvama because the mother's heart. Again, Arjuna went, bound the Ashatvama, brought to the camp, and Arjuna was about to kill before everyone, Ashatthama. You know who came and requested Arjuna not to kill? This Draupadi again, mother power. So the two things we are seeing in the mother, one is the love, one is the affection and dedication for the, the children. They are, they are so kind, so soft. But at the same time, whenever there is something, she is immediately become very hard and very righteous, and she is telling, look, I know the feeling when a mother the lose the child, 
Now, this boy, this person's mother, Kripi, the wife of the, uh, our Dronacharya, she is still living, surviving. She's an elderly lady. I don't like to give this pain to her at this age. Please don't kill him. So this is called the mother's two different power. Friends, I will mention about from the Ramayana, that is the Sumitra, the third, second wife of the king. And what she did, sacrificed her both the sons, Lakshmana and Shatrugna. When the Rama is going to the jungle, it was not necessary for the Lakshmana to go along with the Rama. But even then, he, she told without any hesitation, when his son came, I like to go along with the Rama. She told, you must go protect Rama. And every time you should feel Rama is your father. And his wife, Shita, is me, your mother is a great teaching. And she also asked the Shatrugna to support. That these are the great mothers, the great sacrifice she is doing. And never wanted that Lakshmana was not a simple person, is an ordinary boy. He was also great, powerful. So she could think, my why not Lakshmana to become the king instead of the Bharata? No, she sacrificed. And present time ideal of womanhood is manifested in the life of Ma Sarada. And this is the, the combination of Brahmavadini and Patibrata ideal. Friends, I must request you that you should read the biography of Ma Sarada Mani Devi, wonderfully written by Swami Gambirananda And you will find the if you can remember my today's lecture, the combination of the two ideals of the womanhood, first is the Brahmavadini ideal, ideals of a spiritual person, and at the same time, second ideal, that is Pratibrata ideal, dedicated for the development of the family. These two ideals mingle in Ma Saradamani Devi. Let me conclude by quoting Swami Vishuddhananda Ji, one of the direct disciples of the Ma Saradamani Devi, and he was uh, one of the president of the Ramakrishna Mott and the Ramakrishna Mission. He said in one of his articles, I am quoting the last few lines, the mother was the perfect image of tenderness, modesty, simplicity, and purity. And at the same time, we can remember how Swami Vivekananda is talking about the Ma Sharadamani Devi. And if you read her biography, you will find this too. And this is the present day women's ideal, ideal. The combination of the philosophy, spiritual life, at the same time taking care of the family life. Thank you, friends. My uh, pranam to all the mothers of the world and I beg blessings and I remember today that now and then my own mother who gave me birth, her face is coming as I was discussing this again and again remembering the mother. My mother is now only one mother that is Ma Sharadamani Devi. I pray to her, the eternal mother, the mother of all, to protect us because a very bad time uh, is now the human society is passing all over the world. Now this mother power and this mother power of the divinity should protect us. Jai Ma, the glory to mother. Thank you. If there is any question, I can try to. So Devashish is asking a two-part question. He's saying, you have mentioned that every child should take care of their mother during olden days as every mother sacrificed their life for the children. Then he is asking, however, there are situations in life when one mother is at old age and often disagree with their child because of old superstitions which are not true. How to overcome this situation? Oh, this is a very 
a very special particular the problem and sometimes it is happening in the old age naturally now when we were children they used to take care of us and we were at so many different ways we used to behave and they were so patient patiently they used to take care of us now at the old age they become like the children and we have grown up we have to take the their position and we have to go on adjusting with them and as best way possible what else we can say the different situation we can understand because of the socio economical condition that uh, many of the children are outside far away from the parents but uh, the, you have to find out some solution uh, to take care of the parents main thing is the love main thing is the concern and if you pray to the divine mother the mother please protect my mother my father so something will come up i believe in that way thank you devashish one devotee is asking a two part question again he is saying my intellect has turned against me i was completely oblivious to it i am the reason to it please help second part i am trying to do improve myself i am not able to bear resistance of my mind please guide me the friend what i will say uh, this is a different question not related to the mother so the sometimes uh, as physically we become sick the sometimes mentally also that type of sickness comes because of the different situations maybe i am not successful some places maybe whatever i uh, i i wanted i could not get that but uh, please remember do not and do not i repeat destroy your mind because something is still there always there for you to achieve that is always there some people they get even without any effort so many things that's why the hindus they believe in the past lives because of the karma phala and whatever i have got i have enjoyed that now the situation is different okay let me adjust with that and i will be happy always tell yourself that you have the capacity to become happy that is the main thing to becoming officer and then unhappy to achieve the lot of things and then unhappy that is not the main thing to be happy be happy maybe a little song some songs that you like listen to that maybe you like to talk to your friends listen to uh, talk to them be just happy and don't say oh see you know i am failing i am not getting these never compare with anyone be yourself and be very happy always every time i am sure you can overcome i can quote from the upanishad where it says urdhareet atmana atmanam na atma abhasadayet atmai ba atmano bandhu atmai ba ripu atmana so this is called the scripture they constantly helping us guiding us how giving us the teaching what is the teaching we should help ourselves we should be very friendly with our mind and we should not destroy our mind please don't think that everything is losing there are many things you can be successful just wait and pray and try thank you very much i also pray to the divine mother for your help thank you very much let us say shanti three times and we conclude om shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat